Our project today is cleaning up and getting ready for winter this 1966 Han PHS 122 with a 1990 Briggs & Stratton 3.5 horsepower engine. Our first step with this is to get it clean. It is rather dirty so I got some gunk foamy engine bright and I'm going to spray it down with some foamy engine bright. Cleaning the deck top and bottom and the engine helps preserve the equipment for a long time. After letting the engine sit for about five minutes or so with the gunk foamy engine bright on it, go ahead and hit it with the garden hose. Let's clean that gunk right off of it. This should get all the grease, grass clippings, and what have you off the engine. So she'll be ready to store all winter without any unnecessary corrosion. After using something heavy, like this automotive jack stand, to hold the mower back so I could easily get underneath, I'm going to clean the gunk off the bottom of the deck. Now this is an aluminum deck, and it's a little less susceptible to heavy corrosion, but on a steel deck, this can be the end of the life if you don't clean these things off on a regular basis. I just use my garden hose, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but I get the big chunks out of there. Now it's time to run the engine. After our mowing job, it was just about out of gas, so it shouldn't take long to drain it completely. I'm going to let the engine run out of gas, so that way there's no leftover gas to get and corrode and leave gunk in the carburetor over the winter. After running the engine out of gas, I'm going to go ahead and change the oil. I'm going to use this handy dandy topsider oil change device. It works pretty good. You can pick them up at an auto parts store for right around $100. And it is a lot easier than sometimes having to turn the engine over or drain out through the drain plug. The way this lawn mower engine sits above the deck, it's actually much easier to change it this way without making a large mess. Now you want to make sure you suck the oil out after, of course, the engine's been running. That way it's nice and hot and pumps very easily. This engine holds about 20 ounces of oil, so it doesn't take a whole long time to suck it out, particularly when it's hot. To help facilitate getting the last bit of oil out of the engine, I placed it on a jack stand so I can easily get the last bit of oil out by tilting the oil up to the front. Yeah, made a little bit of a mess there. That's why we got these rags. Go ahead and use a clean funnel to install the oil. I'm going to put in 20 ounces of SAE 30. If the engine's equipped with a dipstick, go ahead and check your oil level to make sure you're right on the money. Be sure to actually put the dipstick in all the way, screw it down, take it back out, and take a look at it. It's just like on a car. Yep. Right on the money, right at the full mark. 
perfect. Using my jack stand to hold the handle down so I can get easy access to the uh, underside and get the blade off, I'm going to use my 3H drive impact wrench to get this off. You can do this also with a regular wrench or a ratchet, but I'm going to do this to speed things up. Before you remove a blade, always make sure you got the spark plug disconnected because what you don't want to have happen is have that blade turn, which cranks over the engine, and accidentally start it up and cut your hand off. Nobody wants that. All right. Easy to remove. Take my parts here, put them here where I don't forget them, and let's head into the garage to sharpen this blade. Back in the garage, you can see I've mounted the blade in my vise on the workbench. I'm also going to use a file to sharpen the blade. I could do this with a modern bench grinder, but we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. Be sure to put a handle on the end of your file. The last thing you want to do is jam that file into your wrist. It hurts. Go ahead and file the blade at the angle the blade is at until you get a nice sharp edge. This blade is in very good condition. Be sure to remove the blade from the vise and turn it around to do the other side. After you're finished sharpening the blade, you need to use a blade balancing cone. This is a device I got from my grandfather many years ago, and you can still buy them today at any lawn and garden shop and sometimes at an auto parts store. Put the blade on the balance and check it to see if the balance is listing from one side to another. If it's even, you're in good shape. If it has a list one way or the other, what you need to do is get the file back out and sharpen the opposite side of the list. That way you can get the blade balanced and it rotates nicely without any odd vibration that could possibly damage your engine. This blade is sharpened and ready to put back onto our mower. All right, let's go ahead and reinstall the blade. I always get it hand tight first then use the impact and crank it down just a little bit. Now on this engine, it spins around quite a bit because this is a belt driven blade. It is not directly driven off of the crankshaft. So we can actually even hold it with our hand. All right, we're in good shape. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the air filter. This particular engine has a foam rubber type air filter that can be reused over and over again. But we need to clean it periodically. This air filter is not too old, so it's in pretty good shape. It just has some gunk on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and clean that up. All this thing is, is essentially just a sponge. So I got a bucket with some soapy water in it. I use dish soap because dish soap is real good at cutting grease. So I wash it around in there and I squeeze it out. All right, just like use any old sponge. And it's not going to become perfectly clean, but it's going to be pretty good. All right, so then after I got soaked up, I got to rinse it off, get the soap out of it, squeeze it a couple of times. Now this type of air filter needs to be oiled for it to work properly. Just the sponge by itself isn't going to cut it. So I'm just going to use a little bit of SAE 30. Come on. There we go. Put it along the oil air filter. 
Put the oil on there. Kind of get it in there. There you go. Good and nasty. All right. Let's go ahead and put it back together. But before we do that, let's clean off some of the extra gunk and that sort of thing that is built up on our air filter housing. All right. All right, just use old rag for that. This old pair of underwear works pretty good. All right. Put our air filter in. Put it back on the engine, make sure it's good. All right. Put that all back together. and reinstall. Alright, now I'm going to remove the spark plug and take a look at it. There's no reason to change a spark plug every year. The engine's in good running condition. Ah, and this spark plug's got a little bit of crud on it. It's not too terrible. We know the engine runs good. In fact, it's a one-pool machine. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this in for this season and uh, think about changing it next year. But I do want to use a little bit of fogging oil in the engine. What this does is helps prevent rust buildup on that nice freshly polished cylinder wall and piston rings Well, it's sitting over the winter. So I shoot a little bit of the, the pen. So I shoot a little bit of the fogging oil in there and I'm going to pull the rope and it'll pull nice and easy. There's no spark plug so there's no compression and that's going to get that fogging oil all over the inside of the cylinder wall. Now when you start it up in the spring it's going to blow a lot of smoke while it burns off that fogging oil but I wouldn't worry about that because you're not going to have any rust. We'll go ahead and reinstall the spark plug. All right, pick it back up, and I think we're in good shape. All right, we're on our last step. This is a self-propelled mower, and it's a chain and belt drive type system. And I don't want that chain to get all rusted up and pulley to get all rusted up over the winter. So I'm just going to use a little WD-40 and lubricate our chain and the little axle on our pulley. Alright. With that, our 1966 Han 22 inch mower with a 1990 Briggs & Stratton 3.5 horse is ready to be put away in the garage all winter. With all these steps, she will be ready to be a one-start machine in the spring and ready to cut the grass and give many more years of great operation.